Now for a person to generate end-tidal CO2, you need three things. The first thing is you need cellular metabolism because cells make CO2. This is actually going to help us to monitor certain disease states. The second thing we need is CO2 that's flowing around the blood to be pushed back to the alveolar units. So we need cardiac output to push the CO2 or blood flow back to the alveoli. And the last thing we're going to need is working alveolar units or lungs. We're going to have to have the patient ventilate in order to push that CO2 that got perfused to the lungs back into the alveolar units up through the trachea into our detector. Now, anytime you're going to use end tidal CO2 to monitor any one of these three parameters, remember one thing. If you're going to monitor one thing, the other two things have to stay stable. If you have a patient, for example, who's in shock and the cardiac output is changing, you should not use end tidal CO2 to monitor ventilation because these two things are varying. But if you have some person that has just one of these variables changing, you could rely on end tidal CO2 to monitor those things. So just keep that in mind.